she sat me down and explained to me that I was going to have a new mommy and daddy because she couldn't take care of me and she wanted me to have a better life than she could give me. Because of that memory, I will never have any animosity towards my birth mother for giving me away. I know she did it out of love. On one level, she accomplished her goal. She gave me to an educated, prominent, upper middle class African American couple that was involved in civil rights and national political organizations. My new mother would be completing her PhD, and my new father would be a well-known politician and successful entrepreneur with a thriving business. She had made an excellent choice. We had this beautiful car, one that I know my birth mother probably couldn't imagine having. One day while riding in that car with my new dad, He pulled over, and he told me to lie in his lap. What I know now is that he wanted to feel me. He was fantasizing about having a new woman in the house. I will never forget that day. What my birth mother may never know is that her best effort to provide a better life for me turned into a nightmare. At four years old, I became my father's mistress. I became the one that he would look to at night to fulfill his sexual needs. I became the one who was forced to assume the responsibility of bringing him pleasure. I was the one who was flaunted at receptions and events as he campaigned for office. I was the lady of the house. I even rode in the front seat while she rode in the back. It started out slowly, I guess. One night, my dad let me stay up late to watch TV, and he had me lie on the floor, nude, in front of him with my legs open while he masturbated to the porn movie playing on the TV behind me. I would soon become for him what he saw on that TV. And he would force himself on me for the next 12 years of my life. He told me that I should never tell anyone what he was doing because it would hurt my mom. And he said that I shouldn't want to hurt my mom because she loved me so much. And he was right. I didn't want to hurt my mom. I didn't want to ruin my new family. See, I was given away once. I didn't want to be given away again. In the third grade, we had an assembly where they taught us about molestation. That's when I learned that there was a name for what my dad was doing. Now, since he said I would hurt my mom if I told, I decided that I would tell a friend and she could tell her mom. And that way it really wouldn't be like I hurt my mom. So I did. I told a friend and she told her mom and her mom called the school and the school called CPS and CPS went to my mother's job and questioned her. She immediately rushed to pick me up from school. She got me in the car and she had tears in her eyes. And she began yelling that she didn't believe me because of what I had done. We went through several CPS interviews and visits. My family convinced them that everything was fine. And before long, my dad had the social worker eating out of the palm of his hand. Before she left the last time, she told me that I should be grateful to have been adopted by such a wonderful family. I gotta tell you, at that point, it became about survival. I started learning techniques that would carry me throughout the rest of my life. My father wanted my body. He was addicted to it. 
He was addicted to the body of a child, and he wasn't going to stop. So I learned how to manipulate. I was from a wealthy family. I went to the best private schools in the city. So I spewed threats all over the place, and I made him give me everything I wanted. What started out as survival became a lifestyle of manipulation that would set me on an eight-year course of self-destruction. They started me in acting at age four and kept me in ballet for 17 years. And I became very, very cocky because I traveled the country as an artist, and I was good at it. I was rebellious. Most kids could only dream of my life. But I was required to have sex with my father, and I was angry. <laughs> 